Hello, hello, Aquarius. Welcome to your March 2020 overview reading. This is good for you if you're a sun, moon, or rising Aquarius. And before we get started, take a moment to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. You will get more amazing readings from me and more content in general. Check me out on Instagram at Onyx Healing if you would like more card pulls and other content from me. I have a lot of really exciting stuff coming up in the coming weeks, so make sure you sign up for my newsletter or go to onyxhealing.com to check all of that out. Sign up for my newsletter over there and you will stay up to date on everything. I have a manifestation class coming out. I have another class that I have in the queue. A la carte clearings are coming back this month. So all, all, all good things. And of course, you guys know I do cold psychic readings, so if you would like to get one done, if you need support, help, if you need me to tune up your energetic body, just go to onyxhealing.com and book a session with me. Now I am going to lay this out and then we will get started. Alright, let's start with your oracle cards for the month. First thing we have is bat. So anytime I see bats, even though, yeah, 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 I know they're not totally blind, but it's the expression that jumps out. And so I think there is a part of this month where you're really going to need to trust and actively create in the unknown. This month is really important for you to kind of take a leap of faith you need to trust things even if you can't see them. You need to really lean into the feeling of I'm doing what's best for me coming from that space at all times, like really listening to what your body needs, what the the newest version of you, right? Because you're constantly growing and evolving, at least I would hope. That's what you need to place your bets on. Not any of the other noise. The bat is helping you understand that doing things differently and evolving is, is the gift. And then we have labyrinth. So feeling or thinking that things are unnecessarily complicated. I don't actually think that's true. I think this is an illusion. Not everything is super complicated and things don't have to be super complicated. I think that especially with the Aquarian headiness, sometimes you can think yourself into perceiving things as needing to be more complicated in order for them to be meaningful. And that's not true. This is kind of like something that you want to keep your eye pe eyes peeled up for. Because it, I'm, I'm actually getting that making things more simple for yourself is going to be what's supportive. Because you can tell this person is stressed out. They're not having a good time. It's like keeping them awake at night. And it, that's just unnecessary. Most things don't require that level of thought to the point where it's causing you stress and keeping you awake at night, you know? And so I think the more you can just simplify things, clear things out, declutter, the better off you're going to be. And then we have paradox. Explore the contradiction. Let it breathe life into the situation. Release stagnating ambivalence. Embrace your dichotomy. Try the wrong approach. Okay, so don't be afraid to experiment for sure. And even if things are conflicting, it's like just be present with it. The central energy is the high priestess using your intuition, getting quiet. Remember, this is a quiet, introspective card. This is not loud and extrover extroverted and doing 50,000 things. This is very, very centered, balanced, quiet. This is also yin, recharging energy. The crossing energy for you is the Nine of Cups. You need to ask for what you want. If you're running on autopilot right now and just kind of going with the flow, it looks like that's actually not working for you, at least in the month of March. We always want to ask for things and then just have conviction, put our energy behind them. And the Nine of Cups is reminding you, you can, you can truly get the things that you want, but you need to 
lay down the ask. You need to ask for it. A closed mouth won't get fed. And marrying your intuition with the ask is ultimately how you're going to get what you want. What you have shifting out is the Ten of Cups. Let me pull the oncoming energy first before I read that. We have the five of pentacles. Ah, okay. So this is where like the contradiction or the contrast is really coming in because this is like happiness, celebration. Oh my God, I'm overjoyed. And then moving into the five of pentacles, this is contraction. This is constriction and scarcity. So I'm just getting that this is contrast. It's not even... It's not even necessarily a reflection of what's going on. It's simply if you eat something super sweet, like a piece of cake, and then you eat a grapefruit, the grapefruit, <laughs> while it's good for you, it's going to taste awful. And so that's kind of what's happening here is you might just be experiencing oh, I was kind of floating or things, you know, felt really easy. And now you might be evolving into doing things that are uncomfortable because you know they're necessary. That seems to be what this is because this is shedding limiting beliefs. This is not an indication that scarcity is oncoming. Of course not. This is ultimately just information of what there is to work through. That's what all of these cards are. It's reflections of what's going on. And so working with the Five of Pentacles is, just coming into witnessing and understanding your own shadow, whatever part of you feels like there's not enough, or maybe there's a lot of negative self-talk going on or a lot of self-doubt. Remember that con contraction is helping you to feel into expansion. So this is a month of contrast for you, feeling into what feels bad compares to what feel compared to what feels good. And that's what all of this is for. And then the outward manifestation is the devil. This is temptation. This is reverting back into old habits, old patterns. And this is also kind of like you need to watch yourself on this. You need to be careful with that devil energy just because it's something that can kind of skew things and take you off track or off course. And so the solution is to say, stay true to yourself, ask for what you need, stay in alignment, get into your intuition, dig into that. And the devil is just something where it's like, we always have to confront the shadow. That That's something that can always be reflected back to us, whether it be an old wound that's getting lit up, that's being triggered, that we have to work through emotionally, or something that um, maybe we would have done in the past, but we're trying to turn a new leaf, right? All of these things are supporting your growth. And this also reminds me of the back card because this also represents shadow. So contrast, shadow, feeling into who do you want to be, not how and who have you been previously. And then in the subconscious, we have the moon, another deeply intuitive card coming up. The exploration that you're doing within yourself is going to be really important. But the one thing that I will say is this energy can be really ungrounding, right? Can feel really destabilizing if you aren't really good at rooting yourself. And so the practice here that you would want to do is how can I get back into feeling grounded? How can I connect to myself again? And if you already have those systems in place, you're going to be able to deal with that moon a lot easier. It's not going to feel as galactic as if you kind of get swept away with the moon. Let me clarify this card for you and see what else is going on. Three of cups. Okay. So the main thing that you might want to consider is getting what I would call reality checks, like having someone reflect back to you, hey, is this, is this really going on? Am I, where, where am I at with this? Sometimes if you can bounce an idea or bounce a thought off of somebody, it can help you really see what's going on internally. If they're simply reflecting, remember not you don't want someone to tell you what you're experiencing, but simply reflecting what you're saying. So I'm getting that there's some collaboration energy down here. Or if you're feeling lost or ungrounded, you might actually want to turn to friends in order to um, just check in with yourself. But just make sure you're really clear on the boundaries of like, I don't, I don't want advice. I just want you to say the words that are coming out of my, my mouth back to me. 
and that can be a really powerful practice. So I'm getting that support, whether you be working with healers or you have some good friends or some good family, whatever, just use the support that you have in if you're feeling like you need some extra TLC. In the advice position, we have the Empress. Divine Feminine coming through. She's been around quite a bit this month. And self-care, 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 self-care. I know I feel like a broken record every time I lean into that. But it's just be very careful if you feel like... If you have a tendency to ignore yourself or if you aren't particularly good at receiving, you know, that's definitely what you still seem to be working on and needing in order to um, work through the contrast, right? That's that's what this month is all about. And I think the, the growth is pushing you to that edge and the next level, which is why you have expansion, contraction, and intuition is in the center of all of this, not putting too many judgment values on the experiences that you're having. In your environment, we have the Three of Swords, Big Fat Release. I'm going to clarify this one as well. And because this is in your environment, this is the, the position that people are really uncomfortable with having. Um, I don't really see it that way. It's like a big cleanse, but you know, it, it's the three of swords. What can I say? It's the uh, shadow side of the human experience. And then we have the queen of wands coming through here. So your power is there. It's not something that is going to knock you down and keep you down. It's not like the vacancy itself is going to ruin you, right? It's it's one of those things that can be as simple and basic as cleaning out a closet or needing room for something bigger and better. Identifying what is it that needs to go? Is it a habit that isn't serving me? Is it a relationship that isn't serving me? Is it a community that isn't serving me? Audit your environment because it seems like there are some things that are going to either organically purge themselves or it's something that you will actively need to release. And even if there's a grieving process, it's kind of like your energy and vitality are going to be replenished as a result. Same thing with the Empress down here. So she is able to support this this three of swords energy in your environment. So it's just like, if it has to go, it has to go. And the more you can kind of float knowing that you're you're going with the current and sticking to your intuition and grounding yourself as much as possible, you're not going to go wrong. Your, your vitality and your true higher self is what shines through with the um, queen of wands. And then hopes and fears, we have the magician... So I think there is maybe in the fear position, we could say this is like a lack of confidence in your ability to actively create. And then on the other side, you know, the hope in this position is I, I want to get what I've asked for with this nine of cups. So either way, maybe there's also a fear of success in there. A lot of people struggle with that as well. Like it can be Fear of, <laughs> fear of good things, fear of bad things, hope for good things. And sometimes we sabotage ourselves and hope for bad things so we don't get our dreams and hopes uh, ripped out from under us, you know. So you want to work with the sneaky shadow elements that might be coming up with the magician. And remember the devil and the five of pentacles, these are unconscious or subconscious programs that you're just, we're constantly in a state of working out the bugs. And I'm just seeing that March is where you're going to be seeing that more than usual and then working with what you have this month. The outcome is the three of pentacles. By the end of March, you really know what you have to work with and what you're going to be working on and what you're going to be building. The, so that is the main thing coming through with the three of pentacles is just like, You've shaken out some of the bugs. You've identified what, what isn't right or what isn't working at this stage because it may have evolved since you last checked in or did an audit. And so now you, you kind of need to feather dust some things, get some clarity, use your intuition. It's an important time to meditate. And then I think once we get into April, you're going to feel as though um, 
you you have all of your ducks in order and you're ready to go full steam ahead. That's what I'm foreseeing. That's the energy of the Three of Pentacles, but we shall see. Now let's get into the timeline. So this is the first quarter of March. We have the King of Shells, Harmony and Integrity. This is you listening to your emotions. And when I say this, I don't mean that you want your emotions to be driving your car. You want to use your emotions as evidence of whatever it is that's going on. Maybe it's your internal state. Maybe it's what, what's working, what's not working. Maybe it's an old wound that needs to be worked through. And your emotions will guide you through that process, right? Emotions are not intuition, just so we're clear. They are not the same thing. They are, they are not something that I would recommend um, blending together. Otherwise, your intuition might get muddied. So remember, emotions are simply highlighting what could potentially be your truth, what you want to experience more of, what you want to experience less of, or the wound. So wherever that lives, that contrasted emotion, that's what you're mastering understanding. And then the second quarter of March, we have the page of feathers, exploration, discovery. This is like you kind of need to explore explore what's going on, ask the tough questions of yourself, and really be honest with whatever it is that's coming up. I'm just getting, you know, have your integrity here. Make sure you use that for the first half of the month, like really being honest with yourself about what, what's happening for you. And then the third quarter, we have the world fulfillment celebration good, good, good. So I think there's kind of like a breath of fresh air that's coming in this third quarter. You know, you might be in discovery stage, mastery stage right here, figuring out, okay, what, what's the next move or what's the next way I need to pivot. And then you, you get a break in this third quarter. And then the fourth quarter, we have the 10 of feathers, recovery, transformation. This is also a big release card, very similar to that three of swords. And so it, it really is just leading up to shedding the, the programs that haven't been working. And that's what all of this is doing for you. Or maybe you're noticing patterns of like, when good things happen, then I, I feel guilt, shame, anger, fear of losing it, right? All of that could be coming up for you in simply things that you're noticing. So let's do a three card pick to wrap this up. You're welcome to ask a question, ask for guidance, clarity, support, whatever it is that you need. Card number one, we have the 10 of pentacles. So think long-term big picture. And this is going to help you with the day-to-day. -day. It's going to help you with the micro. If what you're doing in the short term or what you're doing in the micro sense, the micro decisions are not aligning with what you want for yourself long-term, then you need to adjust. Because it's like the, the small decisions, the things you're doing every day is ultimately what's going to accumulate over time. It's going to compound over time. So the 10 of pentacles is reminding you of that. It's kind of like one, like with a bad habit, doing it for one day isn't bad. Doing it for 20 years is probably going to be detrimental. So that's what this is reminding you to keep in mind. Keep the big picture. You need to zoom out. You need to look at the, the whole thing, not just one element. And then card number two, we have the eight of swords. So again, this is that contraction needing to take some downtime. Um, also, you might be feeling like things are a little bit slower this month or in the situation you're asking about. And I think you just need to continue going slow. Like there's no reason to rush this. And the the Eight of Swords is just helping you to recharge. It's very similar to like the Moon, the High Priestess, the Empress. It, it's helping you continue your development without making you concern yourself with everything outside of you. It's like take the focus, put it internally, 
you know, redirect it towards yourself. And then that is where you're really going to gain your strength. And then card number three, we have the Sun of Cups. This is the Knight of Cups. Okay, maybe this is a person in your space. This can also be you being really honest and straightforward and vulnerable with your emotions. That's what the Sun of Cups is highlighting here. So at the end of the day, the emotions, similar to the, the King of Cups down here, it, it's all about being able to navigate them, being honest and having the integrity with your emotions and then using that for your relationships, for your well-being, for your career. It's like leading with that is really going to uh, be a game changer with whatever you're asking about. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today, everybody. I really, really appreciate you more than you could possibly know. And I do, as I said in the beginning, have a lot of exciting stuff coming up. I have a manifestation class that's coming out. I have just so many things in the works. So make sure you follow me on Instagram at Onyx Healing and sign up for my newsletter to get the best prices, stay up to date, the best time slots for all of the stuff that I have coming. And until next time, have a beautiful, beautiful March, everybody. I am sending you so much love. If you need to submit a prayer request, you are more than welcome to do so at onyxhealing.com. All of the links for everything is in the description box below, as well as the, a list of all of the decks that I've used today. So you're welcome to check that out if you liked any of the decks that I've used. And I will see you all next time. Have a good one. Bye-bye.